How can some animals regenerate body parts following injury? Why can't humans do the same thing? Four scientists in the University of Kentucky Department of Biology are undertaking basic scientific research to begin to answer these questions. Humans carry in our DNA a genetic legacy that we share with other vertebrates. Scientists hope to one day uncover healing abilities that may lie hidden in our own genome. To study cell regeneration in the eye, Ann Morris's vertebrate of choice is zebrafish, a minnow-like freshwater fish. When something happens to our neurons, either in your brain or in your retina, if the neurons die, they can't be replaced. Now, unlike mammals, zebrafish are able to regenerate neurons after injury or disease. And so we want to understand, you know, what are the genes that you need to replace those neurons? How is it that those neurons are able to be remade? And if we can understand that, then we may be able to inform efforts to try to develop therapeutic approaches to treat retinal degenerative diseases in humans. When you're remaking neurons, what you're doing is you're, you're taking a tissue that's already present, a circuit, if you want to make that analogy, that's already existing, and you're asking for cells to be remade and to somehow integrate themselves into an already existing circuit. So it's not just a question of remaking the cells, but also getting them to connect up to the right partners and migrate to the right position and find the proper place. Those are sort of all the things that we're going to have to figure out. Randall Voss is sequencing the genome of salamanders. Though we share many of the same genes, the salamander genome is massive compared to our own, about 10 times as large. Voss's research focuses on axolotls, salamanders with amazing regenerative ability. It's hard to find a body part that they, they can't regenerate. The limbs, the tail, the spinal cord, the eye, and in some species, the lens, half of their brain has shown to regenerate. One thing that we have been doing for the last four years is measuring the abundance of gene expression, transcripts from genes, during the course of limb regeneration. Over a time course, collect the tissue, isolate RNA from the tissue, then use that RNA and hybridize it to a gene chip, which allows you to estimate the expression of 20,000 genes at one time. And so you do that over and over and over again. And Last four years, we've collected 8 million estimates of gene expression in that approach. So we're building a model for how genes are turned on and how turned off over very small time scales so that we can have this blueprint to move forward with. Voss's partner in salamander gene sequencing is Jeremiah Smith. Smith also brings expertise in another species, sea lamprey. So we know that lampreys, for example, can regenerate their spinal cord. They'll repair their spinal cord and in five weeks the animal can swim perfectly. We think that this unique biology of lamprey can sort of allow us a handle into identifying those specific cell types that are maybe set aside that permit regeneration. We know these animals can heal. We'd like to figure out how so that we can heal better. You can think of this as like several baby steps too in terms of identifying some of the factors that allow cells to create these special undifferentiated cell types that promote regeneration. Five years ago, Ashley Seifert, whose research was focused on skin regeneration in salamanders, began to look at another remarkable species, African spiny mice. What's phenomenal is that they're able to regenerate complex tissue structures. So they can regenerate pieces of their skin, that includes hair follicles and sebaceous glands, which are associated with it. The underlying dermis, the structural component of the skin, which gives it strength. And then in the ears, amazingly, they can regenerate cartilage. And if you talk to an orthopedic surgeon, he'll tell you that it'd be a huge advance if we could figure out how to regenerate cartilage in a, in a mammal, because we don't have any way to, to do that right now. We punch a small hole through the ear here, and then we use that as our model to watch regeneration. So we reconstruct that process through these pictures of the tissue as it regenerates. Together, these scientists make up the core of an unofficial regeneration cluster, an emerging area of strength for UK. Within just four or so years, we've brought in all these really good young scientists that work on similar problems. I can go talk to Ann about the eye, I can talk to Ashley about the limb, and then of course I'm working really closely with Jeremiah on building a representation of what the genome looks like. 
the great thing about the group is we're not really invested strongly in any single system and we're invested in cross-talking between systems. And that's something that's really rare across the country to have that many people clustered in a department who are interested in studying regeneration. And I think it's enormously beneficial, especially for our graduate students, to have these kinds of interactions with multiple investigators who are studying this really interesting biological question.